we have something to talk about. Most couples don't like to talk about this in public. It's about the first time. The first time. Together. Together. In public. It can be uncomfortable. It can bring back awkward memories. Awkward memories. It can be stressful. It's something we don't like to talk about. It can be embarrassing. But we're willing to talk about it with you. With you. One on one. Shh. Don't tell anyone. Of course, we're talking about parking the RV for the first time in the storage unit. Otherwise known as You're gonna fit what? Where? Stay tuned. John. I'm Melissa. We're Little House of Bake. We're back without all the hoke <laughs> to talk about our first time. Our first time. Parking the RV in the storage unit. Yeah. It was a toughie. It was difficult. It was hot that day. It was hot. Sweaty. Nerves we, didn't help. No. We, we decided in our infinite wisdom to do it after coming back from a weekend trip because we thought Hey, we've had this rig for, you know, seven or eight months. We've got this down. We can park this thing. Sure. We've got our hand signals together. He understands me. I understand him. We're all good. We, we weren't good. No. <laughs> no. Many challenges abound. So you have to think about a storage unit. In our case, it's a lot. Uh... They try to maximize their profit, which means they want the max number of whatever's being stored in the lot, which means they measure it out almost to the inch of how much room you're going to have. Not just the slots themselves, but the aisleways. That's right. They, uh, they want to fit as much as they can in there, and so you get as little space as possible. Yeah. I mean, we have a, a picture of our, our lot, and they've put... Uh, paint on loose asphalt so you know it's an ishy kind of a measurement but I think they're 10 to 11 feet yeah in that range yeah so you know over time the lines kind of get smushed around and ours on one side has a fifth wheel that's been there all three seasons that we've had this spot and on the other side at the time we had a smaller trailer I want to say maybe 20 feet yeah, somewhere in that But, range. you know, big enough that it was not going to be easy. Right. Big enough to be in the way. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we started, and um, John started to bring that trailer back, and... Yeah, got a little close to the fifth wheel. Yeah. Yeah, the because there's so little room, and I was such a novice at the time, not a lot of room to get a lot of any tail swing. Uh, just not much tail swing anyway on the back of the trailer to get it in and there wasn't enough room on the opposite side of the aisle for me to swing the truck wide so it became this balancing act of trying to get the back of the trailer into this narrow spot and not swing the front of the truck out to the point that I was hitting the big expensive class A's on the other side um, so there was a lot of in and a lot of out and a lot of in and a lot of out and it seemed like no matter what I did trying to get better lined up in that slot I just kept inching closer and closer and closer to that fifth wheel to the point that we were about two to three inches from that bad boy and um, you know we were convinced that 
we weren't going to leave that storage lot without without some kind of insurance claim. On our rig and on the fifth wheel. Because yeah. that fifth wheel's uh, nose lines up perfectly with our bedroom window. And I just kept, every time the truck moved, even a little bit, I just kept seeing that nose and our window getting closer and closer. And closer. Um, so, you know, we were being short with each other, and we were both frustrated, and it was really hot, and I and was really we sweaty. We didn't have our <laughs> hand signals down as well as we thought. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm not a professional director. Yeah. Um, and we've tried the radios, and the radios don't. They don't work well for us either because it, they're so hard for me to understand, you know. Right. It's there. Now, did she say left or right? Well, <laughs> and honestly, it's one more thing to pay attention to, right? I mean, mm -hmm. you, if you're driving, you've got the all of the front nose of the truck to worry about. You're worrying about not putting the tailgate of the truck into the camper itself. Um, you're trying to pay attention to me. You're trying to find me. I'm trying to pay attention to the two sides that I can't always see at the, both times. I'm trying to make sure that you can see me. I mean, like, there's one more thing for us yes. was just, it's just not worth one more thing to pay attention to. So we have, over the time, figured out better. Yeah, I think at, at this point we've decided what works best for us is that uh, Melissa just tells me what direction she wants the end of the trailer to go. If she wants the end of the trailer to go that way, I steer the truck so the end of the trailer goes that way. And because doesn't that make the most uh, sense? I think and it because makes sense. I can't, <laughs> I can't see what she sees from her point of view. She can't see what I see from my point of view. In the beginning, we're both like, "What the heck is that other person doing? Can't they see what I'm dealing with up here? Or can't they see what we're dealing with back there?" So, what what we wound up doing is. Melissa said, you know, let's just stop where we're at, get out of the truck, look at what the situation is all the way around the trailer, and let's figure it out. We have uh, family friends who did full-time RVing, and they've given us many words of wisdom, but one of the things that stuck in my head is that this is your rig. Whatever happens to it is your responsibility, and you together can figure out how to get in or out of any situation. And in that moment when panic was literally starting to set in, um, I could hear her voice talking about, this is your responsibility and you can figure this out. So that's become kind of a, a resounding message in my head of stop. Just stop where you're, what you're doing and there, that's become kind of um, normal. When we start to park the rig anywhere, is that we get into a safe place and John comes out and we together talk through the line of how the trailer is going to back in or what my concerns are and what his concerns are. And sometimes he needs me to be standing someplace that I don't think I should be standing because he can't see me. Right. Or, you know, we've learned to use lights, flashlights and stuff like that so he can still see the corner but he does not see me. So it's about rethinking your situation and not just getting stuck in the I told you to go this way and I'm looking out for that. And, you know, you still have to park the trailer. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> it still has to be parked, even if you're in the midst of a massive fight. And you still need to be talking to each other at the end of that. Yeah, and our plan for RVing was not to have a divorce in the middle of it, so right. we have to figure it's out... It's supposed to bring us closer together. <laughs> Some days. <laughs> that day... So, the first time took us... Two and a half hours. Two and a half hours. I'm proud of that. <laughs> yeah. So after uh, after I got out of the truck and we evaluated, we decided because we were so close to the fifth wheel, the best thing to do was to just set the trailer down, disconnect it from the truck, uh, pull the truck back around and line it up straight with the trailer. Right, because at this point it was so almost jackknife, just trying to get it where it was. Uh, it just and I did such a horrible job. An absolute parallel to the fifth wheel. If it we was. could just push trailer. our trailer over straight, yeah. it would have been perfect. You had it straight in the slot, just two yes. inches from the. The trailer <laughs> was straight, but the truck was not. So yeah, so we hooked it back up. 
uh, I pulled it out as straight as I could and managed to get it over to the right enough to get it centered in the in the spot and we backed it in and we were done. Proud to say though that, that was the last time that we've ever had to disconnect the trailer Not or the work. truck from the trailer <laughs> in the process of of backing it in someplace. So. But it's, you know, that was not an option in our head until we were in the midst of it and we had to think differently and disconnecting just became the only choice. Yeah, it, by that point it was, it, we were in a pickle and we just, the best way to get out of that was to open the jar. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so it's not pretty and uh, we've gotten much better at communication at least as far as the trailer's concerned. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so. We learned, or I learned, a really valuable lesson and one that I'm really glad we didn't attempt um, at the first month we had the rig, um, but it was that the two of us can figure it out together. Uh, that even though I'm not the one driving and he's not the one directing, there's we can think outside of the box, we can trust each other, he can trust my voice to say stop or do this, and I can trust his voice when he all of a sudden pulls it all the way out, back out and starts all over again. <laughs> yeah, sometimes we just have to start fresh. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, for us, it's been a growing experience. Um, one that I'm glad we're through that major two and a half hour effort, uh, but it was necessary. and. So if you are going through something that's, you know, in your, it's tight and you're snipping at each other and things are not going quite right, take a deep breath, get recentered. Remember that the point was to get closer to each other and not farther apart. And that the other person doesn't see what you see and you don't see what the other person sees. Right. And it's a journey. You know, you are not going to master this uh, process the first time, the second time. The third time, no. The second time, I think it only took us a half an hour. Mm -hmm. uh, now, like that, when John put it away for the winter, he backed it in the first time perfect. I, I, it was beautiful. Uh, that doesn't always happen, though. <laughs> no. uh, I'd like to say it does, but no. Yeah. So, an experience that you must walk through or must drive through, something to learn about each other, clean up your communication, keep a clear head, take a deep breath, remember... It's your rig, it's your responsibility. What happens to it, you have a choice in, and you have a choice in your relationship. And if you have a first time story that you think we'll find entertaining, please leave it in the comments below. And while you're down there, subscribe, like, ring the bell, <laughs> so that you get notifications every one of our new videos. Yeah, and let us know what you'd like to hear. We are still uh, new enough in the part timing that our stories are still uh, relatively sharp in our memory. Yeah. So. <laughs> still a little hurt in places. So if this is your first season and you're wondering what about this, what about that, we are here for you. Let us know. Until then. Coffee out. Coffee out. You want me to pour what? Where?